Hi, this is Mr. Reynolds. Hey, this is Mr. Langhoff here. And we're gonna do a little demonstration for you on uh, the phenomena of weight. And what we've got here is, this is called an analog bathroom scale. Uh, it's not a digital readout, so I know how you feel about those things with analog clocks, but we're gonna give it a shot anyway. I'm gonna press down on this and watch what happens. If I apply a force on here, right there, Tell me what is the reading for the most part right there, okay? So what I'm gonna do is write down what I think I saw on that. And I'm looking at that on those on that scale. It's measured in pounds. That's, the, that's what uh, the United States uses for its measurement system. So I'm just gonna write down 80 pounds and we can abbreviate that with LBS, okay? Now, the problem is, is that in science, we don't really uh, talk in pounds. There's another form of, of measurement when we're recording weight, and that's called, it's a lot like some of your favorite uh, cookie, Newtons. So, and that's spelled just like it sounds, new, ten, Newtons. So, in another little video, I'm gonna show you how to convert from pounds into newtons. Hey, we just recorded uh, the amount from that scale, but we measured it in pounds. If you recall, we got 80 pounds. That's, that's the shortcut for pounds. We wanna convert this though into newtons. And let me give you a conversion. If you had one pound, that's gonna be equal to 4.45 newtons. Okay? You didn't think it's going to be math? Math and science go together. So, guess what? What if we had, let's do this. If we had one pound, we know we have 4.45 newtons. What if we had 10 pounds? How many newtons would that be? Give you a minute to think about that. We'll get back to you. Okay, hey, we're back. And when we look at converting from one pound to 10 pounds and into Newtons, notice that this is a factor of multiplying by 10. So in math, when we see the equal sign, you can basically just draw a line down the middle. Whatever you do on this side of the equation, you have to do on this side to make it equitable. That's equations 101. So we're gonna multiply this side by 10 as well. So I'm just gonna take 4.45, because that was my constant for the one pound, multiply it by 10, and if I just carry the decimal over, I get 44.5 newtons. So that's how we convert from pounds to newtons. Um, back, I just wanna kind of explain like the difference between mass and weight. And it's not that easy to comprehend. So I've come up with a pretty simple example. I'm standing on Earth and here I am standing on Mars, allegedly. So my mass is how much that I, my molecules, uh, how dense I am, it's what my representative mass is, that's not gonna change if I'm on Earth, if I'm on Jupiter, or if I'm on Mars. But I'll tell you what's gonna change, is my weight. So I'm gonna have a specific weight, let's say it's 100 pounds, if it was on Earth. Well, there's a bit of gravity going on here that keeps me on Earth. That also makes it so that my weight registers as 100. Okay, my mass is the, my mass is just, we're gonna call the mass is equal to one, okay? Over here on Mars, my mass is also one. The mass doesn't change, but the effect of gravity on Mars isn't as pronounced as it is on Earth. So my weight is gonna change. Even though the masses stay the same, my weight is now gonna change. So if I weigh 100 pounds on Earth, I'm gonna weigh 38 pounds on Mars. So you can see that the weight 
is affected by the different effects of gravity on the two different planets. Okay, students, would you please open up the file titled, How Can We Measure Forces? Thank you. Okay, hey, we're back, and now I'm going to be measuring the medium bag, of course, Sam. I've got the same spring scale and same process, just put it on, and I want to measure relatively fast, and it's reading two newtons more or less on this spring scale. Yeah. Okay, hey, I'm going to measure the large bag, of course, Sam, now. I had to change out my spring scale because this one has a different scale to, high, to hold the higher weight. So same thing, once you put it on the spring scale, you want to measure right away. This one's reading more or less three newtons. Okay, we're focusing on one segment here of the table. Force, pull required to drag bag. So we're gonna start with the small. I'm gonna drag the bag so that we can add data right here. Go. Okay, it looks like it's pulling about 0.25 newtons, right? 0 0.25 newtons down in your table. Go. All right, so hey, we got the medium bag here. I'm gonna pull it and see what the drag force is on this. It's looking like about 0 0.50, so right, 0 0.50 down. Hey, lastly, large bag. Let's pull this and see what the drag force is. Again, looking like 0 0.75 newtons. So right, 0 0.75 down in your table for large bag. Okay, for the final part of the lab. We measured each bag, small, medium, and large. And what you need to do is on your chart, enter the amount in each bag. 